everyone. It's time to eat, drink, and be merry with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Blend Radio with Nancy and Lisa. Of, we are publishers of Big Blend magazines, which includes Eat, Drink, and Be Merry magazine. And today, our special guest will be featured in the next issue. Uh, we welcome back travel writer Linda Kassam. You know her as the food, wine, and shopping mm. diva. And actually, this broadcast kicks off her new series with us every first Saturday, not second, even though this is airing on the second, because we're at the beginning of January and New Year's Day is New Year's Day. That's Bloody Mary Day. Uh, Anyway, so every first Saturday, because divas come first, (laughs) you'll hear her episodes. I talk about wine, travel, food, shopping, you name it. Uh, Always a good time with with Diva Linda. You can read her articles up on Blend Radio and TV.com. Also follow her at allingoodtaste.info. But today she's bringing a special guest, Sharon Kroger. She is the owner of SO Coffee House and Roastery in Phoenix, Arizona. Arizona, and her coffee is amazing. We've we've been loving it, and mm-hmm. we've even toddyfied it. Um, yes. <laughs> but it's really, really a wonderful. Uh, we'll talk about it all, but really wonderful. And uh, Linda wrote an article about her experience. Plus, we have a really cool recipe from Sharon. So it's all up on BlendRadioNTV.com. So first off, welcome back, D- Divas. First, <laughs> Diva Linda, <laughs> welcome back. Good. Good. Great. Thank Very you. Good. 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 And, good. And home in Arizona. So, of course, you're out running around finding all kinds of good Arizona treasures. I am. I went on the Arizona foodie trail yesterday. I started my journey on there. There's there's many stops. Then I did three. But there's many more to go. But, uh, you know, it's and we'll talk about that later. That'll be that'll be on uh, my show probably in March. So uh, anyway, it's great. Had had a great fun. I don't know if Sharon's had an opportunity to go on the foodie trail per se, but she's probably been to every one of the ones that are on the foodie trail. So there you are. Well, welcome, Sharon. How are you? Hi, I'm great. I'm, I'm really happy to be chatting with you. This is cool. cool. I'm very excited about, you know, here it is, another female entrepreneur. I think, Linda, you do look for women entrepreneurs, I, or does it just happen? That, you no, know, I, I, I prefer to support local and women in business, and especially if they have a very interesting story, and uh, Sharon does have one, and, uh, and an interesting place for uh, my readers to go, so, or listeners to go. So, uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a real treat for me. Well, the coffee is amazing. And mm-hmm. so it was the one that, because Linda was talking about in an article about the house blend, and it seems that you're, we're into blending, as you can tell. Yes. <laughs> we're at the big blend. Um, but it, was that the house blend that you sent us? Yes, that's the house blend. And we also do a decaf. We just do the two okay. different roasts. Mm. Uh, you know, so the house blend to me, what was really wonderful is that it's not overpowering. And it kind of comes up and sneaks up on you with a little here, a little there. It's, so it wasn't this, but uh, you're, mm. you're able to just, just sit and relax and enjoy it, basically. I know relax yes. and coffee don't always go hand in hand, but <laughs> I have does. some right here. <laughs> just and it's around. chock full of these beautiful beans in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, we travel full time. And so even uh, making the coffee, we, we Nancy almost got a hammer out. But, I know. Um, <laughs> I was like, I, it smelled so good. I'm like, I felt like we learned that you can use a blender to grind. <laughs> Some people don't don't have coffee things in their homes. <laughs> yeah, well, coffee so, grinder would be good. A coffee but, grinder um, and. We figured it out, but I was going to go sit with the cats in the garage with a hammer and play Flintstones. <laughs> but we managed, she managed to get it all blended and, and perfect. And so tell us what's in the blend. Okay, it's a blend of Brazil, Guatemala, uh, Tanzania, oh. pea berry, uh, wow. Ethiopia, and wow. Costa Rica. See, this There's is a lot why, in there. This it's is a why global, we love this. global ex- flavor exp- explosion. It's, <laughs> got, it's got that Africa tang. Mm. That's, the, that's that mellow richness. That yeah. Thing. Each of yeah. the beans has like a different flavor profile that brings mm. into the mix. And it just, it's supposed to taste like what you expect coffee to taste like. There's nothing too surprising about it, um, but it just has that rich, nutty chocolate. Um, full bodied flavor. Full body, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. not that that like gut wrenching. You know what I mean? When it's 
there's just this really cool balance that you've hit with yeah, it. Yeah, I have, I did really, you know, that's what it, what I was looking mm. for is a balanced bean um, that did well um, as a latte, as any kind of brew method. So you can just make a regular uh, cup of coffee at home, or um, you could do the espresso at the shop and they're going to taste different, but um, it's going to be what you expect it to taste like. Mm. It's not anything mm. too surprising, like some of the lighter, brighter roasts that are out there. Oh, we loved it. And Diva mm. Linda, um, it seems that you had like a nice tasting experience and also a learning experience going through this and even had, what is it, coffee soda? What? Yeah. <laughs> oh. So- so Sharon was extremely generous with her time and uh, sharing her talents, I'll tell you that. And I used to write a coffee and tea newsletter many, many years ago. And so I've been to cuppings, I've been to tastings and so forth and so on uh, over the years. But I thought I liked this one a lot because it mm. was so well prepared when we got there. It was well staged. Uh, she knew what she was talking about. She um, went over it nice and slow and uh it was a great experience of of tasting from the blend two of the of the uh ingredients in there two of the coffee beans and and then tasting it so tasting each one separately and then the blend together so mm. very very interesting um, to see how one tastes and then how the second one tastes and then what happens when you put them both together what a treat. Mm. And that was just one of the things we did, but it was a uh, smart because her, that's her signature coffee. And you have to understand that to understand how she does everything else and how she does everything else is like a master blender. Mm. Uh, and by that, oh, I mean, so there's not, it's not like um, Starbucks where you go in and there's 50 different kinds of coffees that you can buy in terms of roasted coffees i'm not talking about the drinks but the coffee this one she's figured out uh what her clients like what she likes what's mm-hmm. the base for everything she does and uh and she's gone with it and I'm, I'm really uh really pleased with that i'm inspired by that so she didn't need to do 50 different types of coffees for you mm-hmm. to buy you can buy one that she's worked hard on that she sources herself she runs oh. around in phoenix and gets this that and the other thing and um you know, it's very inspirational, I think. Uh, That's cool. You know, that takes time. It's not something that you just do. I mean, you have to think about it and you have to um, keep tasting it. And I'm sure, I'm not quite sure, but I found out when I was doing a lot of coffee tasting, it's like wine tasting, uh, producing wine, in that how the beans taste one year with the same name and then you go back the next year Sharon can correct me if she thinks it's different but there can be a slight change in how they taste from year to year it depends on the weather and all that kind of stuff buying from the same source I think but um anyway somehow she seems to keep this all together and uh uh the tasting was great and one of the my favorite things was her SO soda is that how is that right it's called the SO soda and I think that's one of yours Yes, it what is. A, what a treat. I mean, it's mm. it's coffee. Mm. Tell us what the Esso soda has in it. Uh, well, we use the, the soda that we use is um, Perrier. And oh. um, then it's just two shots of the espresso mixed oh, with wow. um, one ounce mm. of dark chocolate. Oh, yeah. you see? Yes. oh yes. and then put a little shot oh. of rum in there. Oh, here she is. She's <laughs> off on a cocktail tangent, you know. This is yeah. this is awesome. Ooh, I mean, because you never really think good. of that, you know, having it all bubbly. And I know there's mm-hmm. apparently Linda was talking about the cold coffee brew is a huge mm-hmm. I mean, obviously I can, you know, we know we know Arizona summers. We lived out, mm. you know, in Tucson and we lived out in the high desert of, you know, up in California. So we know how we need we want our coffee, but we may want it on the cooler side midday, right? I don't <laughs> know, right now I pick Arizona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is my favorite summer drink. Um, mm. Definitely. And it's, there's not a lot to it. It's mostly water, which is great for Arizona. Um, but I think it's the bubbles. I'm not sure. It just goes straight to your head. You get all the caffeine um, experience, <laughs> you know? And like it's it. also, since it's dark chocolate, it's a vegan drink too. So anybody can have it. It's, it's great. 
Mm. Oh, that's great to hear. Go mm. back a little bit on the beans, because that, that is interesting. We we used to live in Kenya, and so mm -hmm. we had coffee and tea growing all around mm. us, which was yes. wonderful. But they at mm. that point, way back when, when we were ancient, no, now we're ancient, yeah. right? Way yeah. back when, they weren't actually processing. They didn't they have just the grew and facilities. The leaves. They picked and shipped. Um, yeah. But it, it's interesting when you think like, what well, Linda, you're going back to the grapes, like every year can be different according to what's happening in the world. So mm -hmm. what happens with coffee? Does it change? So you have to keep constantly tasting what you've sourced? Um, there's not as drastic of a change um, since the soil is the same and the weather is generally the same, but it does um, make adjustments over the years. But since it's a fifth, each bean is a fifth of the blend, um, it doesn't show up as much in the end product. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, that's cool. That's interesting. I like that it's mm. a global blend. I like this. Yeah. It's like music. Mm -hmm. it's <laughs> so when you, the world. <laughs> when you get them, they're like they're raw beans and then you roast them. And there is that also part of the the secret of blending? Are you blending the beans before they like how yeah, what's going on? <laughs> yes, <laughs> you do that? definitely each process is um very important. Um, each stage is very important to get the flavor right. It's just like cooking. Mm -hmm. So um, we take the be the raw beans and we roast them um, in a gas roaster in a, it's a cast iron drum that rolls over flame. Oh, wow. And mm -hmm. um, so with our recipe, we want to roast the beans um, 15 minutes. So you have to adjust the gas to make sure that you're not burning them and you're getting it to the right stage at the 15 minute mark. And there's different ways of telling this. There's um, there's popping and um, the change of color and gases like emitting and different things that the roaster can track for you. And mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, just like cooking, you want to get it. Uh, the time in the roast helps with the flavor profile mm -hmm. too. So um, and then after you're done roasting, the grind and the process of making the coffee also changes the flavor, which is really mm. interesting too. Mm. Oh, okay. So the actual grind of it. So mm. the hammer, not such a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you get it to the size, yeah, to the right size, then yeah, it, but you will, if you um, get a burr grinder and you grind it mm. finer, it's going to, the um, flavor will be different. Now, yeah, you have a you have a roaster on premise. I mean, in mm -hmm. the coffee shop during the day, the roaster has like a screen around it. Mm -hmm. So you so I didn't even notice it when I came in, but she pointed it out to me. They have a special person, as I understand it, that comes in at what time in every night. So what time do they come in at night? 10? Yeah, our roaster, he's there um, usually around 10 till 2 a.m. Wow. Yeah. So can think you imagine? That, just, so huh. how much coffee do you roast per night? You think, well, for a week, we do about 250 pounds a week right now. Wow. Can you imagine that? Wow. But if you wow. go, if you go to this uh, shop, you'll see that uh, the locals are just pouring in. It's just a real fun experience to see. And the cold brew is people are coming with these big jugs <laughs> of coffee it's the funniest thing we met the the nicest man who was telling us all about he works from home and he a huge jug and he it comes in and and i don't know how often does he come in once a day once every couple he, days um he gets a gallon wow. every 10 days and we do sell we do we probably <laughs> sell maybe 10 I would say 10 gallons every two days or something it's we go through a lot of crazy like big yeah. milk jug gallons like yeah. full of cold wow. coffee that's already made mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. uh -huh. and wow. they keep it in their fridge and we also sell half gallons um those are pretty popular wow. too um huh. yeah. wow <laughs> this is a whole other experience yeah it and is. the other thing is huh. going there now Diva Linda you're saying if you're getting your car done or going to the hospital that's next door this is a place to chill out you've got wi-fi you've got pastries mm -hmm. and that's what I want to get is yeah. you talk about this mm -hmm. local business part is that you have tamales yeah yeah how does that go with I coffee? never thought of tamales Good. and coffee yeah Good. all this spice oh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh. missing out. Wow. <laughs> yeah, um, we we use um, 
a local um, panderia, like a Mexican uh, bakery in town who's been around open for 30 years. Um, wow. And they're wonderful. They have the best pan dulce and they sell tamales and they sell burritos uh, and tortillas, wow. handmade tortillas there. Oh, cool. So um, we wanted a savory item for people instead of just uh, having a sweet thing there. And you know, smoothies, it could just be so much, so many options. Uh, and it would take up some time in the line. And like Linda said, there's lots of people coming through it's a really small shop so we try to make it as quick as possible and um to just have some tamales steaming um in the back was just so simple for us and um they are just outrageously delicious they're they they do a really good job there do you have a special yeah and and i want to say that their pastries i believe come from the same place is that correct everyday Mm -hmm. fresh Mm -hmm. go pick them up there's an assortment uh we had i think five or six that uh, she let us taste and uh and so it's different so you're not going to go in there necessarily and find the normal blueberry muffin brownie i don't know whatever cake pop you're not going to find that so much um but these are beautiful mexican Mm -hmm. kind of uh inspired little pastry things and they all go well See, this is this is how, how this is so interesting. They all go well to different types of coffee drinks mm-hmm. that one can get. Who would know? Somebody actually thought this out. <laughs> and uh, uh, and you know, Sharon, can you uh, uh, share with us how you got this coffee? What you had to go through to get this coffee shop? Find a place and, and open oh, it. Gosh. I think that story is really interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. And thanks, Linda. I appreciate that. Like, I, I do love having the pan dulce there. And uh, for a lot of people, it is strange because they don't know what any of it is. And you you can kind of explain it to them in a way that they can understand some of its pound cakes, some of its croissants, some of its muffins. Um, and so we we can make it familiar for people. But since it is, you know, for, I guess, maybe half the population in Phoenix, just something brand new I appreciate that but it's it it's nice to hear that other people appreciate it too (laughs) Um, a little bit yeah about um how you got started with this particular business and the sort of trials and tribulations you went through because this is true entrepreneur (laughs) kind of story Mm. that inspires those that have been said no to yeah it is it is a really, really, it's, uh, it's hard. It's very hard. Like um, we didn't have a proof of concept whenever I was starting this. I had been in coffee for 15 years previously. And it was just at a time where I had decided I wanted to take on um, the responsibility and um, make it my full-time job. Um, it was always a second job for me. And um with my, with my resume and with things that I had, uh, uh, other careers that I had had in the past, I figured it was something that I could do. And, um, so I started my business plan and, um, once my business plan was complete, I started looking for a spot and it took me almost a year to find a location. Wow. Um, I was having just a hard time, uh, with landlords, uh, <laughs> giving me any time, um, or attention yeah. because I was just, uh, new and, um, learning to start something new. And, uh, and I wanted something small, which nobody was very interested in, um, just renting out 600 square feet in their building. So, um, yeah, it, it took me two and a half years from deciding to, uh, wow. open it to mm. opening it. Wow. Wow. And you want to do mm. the roaster at the same time? Was that part of the original? Yeah, I did. I, um, mm. I knew I wanted to roast because I knew what I wanted the coffee to taste like. And, um, I also, uh, knew it would be a bigger profit margin, um, to roast my own instead of buying from somebody else and, um, selling it. So do you, when you're, when you're making these blends, um, the coffee, are you thinking this is going to go great with tamales? <laughs> 
you know? <laughs> no, the tamales came later. It was just, uh, yeah. what can we, what can we do to, um, you know, satisfy the customer requests, mm. basically. When you, when you started and you're going, what, two and a half years from, you know, here's my idea to go yeah. through that process. I mean, that's, it is hard. Talk about patience, you know, yeah. and, yeah. and still perseverance, right? Going hand in hand. Do you think part of the problem is also that We've got like the star, I'm not going, you know, we've got the Starbucks, we've got the Keurigs out there that everyone, mm -hmm. I mean, we really, we pets it and we're in everyone's home. So we know what, what's going on, <laughs> what people have. And it's like, okay. And honestly, it's pretty amazing how people all have different ways of brewing their coffee right. with little, all these new little thingies. Mm -hmm. And it's cool. We learn coffee as we travel. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of times is these big conglomerates, oh, a Starbucks moving in everybody wants to, you know, rent out to them. Is that kind of what you went against too? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, mm. I was fortunate enough to have access to like a mapping software um, and was able to kind of put in these various locations I was looking at and um, plug in just like very interesting questions about um, how many people in the neighborhood, um, how much they spend on going out for coffee for instance. Oh, wow. Um, cool. Yeah, it was very specific things that I could um, look into. Wow. And then obviously looking at like the demographics and then the um, what, what coffee shops were around. And the location that I picked, not only was the landlord um, receptive of me, um, but it happened to be just a perfect spot. And mm -hmm. um, since opening, uh, we're going to be four years in March. Okay. There has been a um, Starbucks, a Dutch Brothers, and another local coffee roastery uh, moving in within blocks of us. So oh, wow. that for me shows that it's a good location. Um, but uh, yeah, when we started, luckily we started a year before the first one opened. So we had a lot of the neighborhood already checking us out. And and you've got the cold coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you've got the blend, the secret yeah. blend. Sure, yeah, secret blend. And we've got the tamales. Uh, see, yeah, but, but see, I think that's, that's cool. Well, I think what's, I like it's really it. important about that and, and the due diligence you did about mm -hmm. the research is something really important that, you yeah. know, you get excited about a concept and business and then you just jump in. But if you don't do that you extra do research, you could, you, could, you could mess with yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. The tamales and the pastries, the Mexican pastries go really well in coffee because you've got to think back to the roots of coffee. Mm -hmm. I know it goes back to, mm -hmm. you know, Arabic coffee is one of the yep. oldest, isn't it? I think, but you've got to think about the Aztecs and the Mayans way mm -hmm. back, you know, so you've got to go all the way down to the point, you know, the bottom of South America through Latin America to North the hillsides America. hillsides of Colombia. Yes. I mean, it's moved up. So mm -hmm. I think it does kind of have a connection with with tamales i'm just saying <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you can I, grab and go i mean it's super yeah, simple yeah i like it mm -hmm. i'm gonna have to try it <laughs> oh man i love this so yeah. uh, there's classes coming on because you also i have to go back to the article and, and you know also reading about you sharing that this all started with chocolate ice cream like I, coffee, I, ice, coffee cream. ice cream <laughs> I, I want some coffee as soon as i read that i'm like that sounds I want good some too coffee ice cream yeah yeah i'm gonna Ooh. i'm gonna make cold coffee and like a float yep, yep. we've done that with the cold brew Ooh. yeah super good mm. Ooh. so so ice cream can lead you to running your own <laughs> coffee shop i like this oh, i want to put a, i want to put a little caramel in there uh -huh. mm -hmm. butterscotch butter oh some Ooh, butterscotch, butterscotch. Ooh, yeah. we do have a butter rum at the Ooh, shop it's down. delicious Ooh, she's my girl <laughs> So got butter rum. Yeah. So, so, so all this leads to this. I love this. And it's, you know, get some ice cream and going, but you're also oh. part, your part of your background is event planning. So mm -hmm. does that help in understanding wow. timing of getting things out on time? And yeah, I, um, one of, I, I did do event planning for the Hyatt right after college. And, um, that is just an intense job. Just mm -hmm. there's like maybe 31 different, uh, uh, customers are event planners that you're working with throughout the month. Ooh. Um, all that wow. constantly, it's just, it, it's crazy. So yeah, it definitely helped me with my organization skills. And I just love that, um, 
just the concept of turning like a room into something completely different for a special event. And um, we've done some really fun things mm -hmm. at the shop. Um, we did a, a vampire themed birthday party, which was super fun. We, we have cool. a BYOB for special events uh, oh, there. Cool. And um, so we, we turned the whole place into like a little vampire. Cool. Diesel Linda. <laughs> Really fun. <laughs> She's gonna be vampiring, but your <laughs> classes are something you're doing. So what happens at the classes? Yeah, this is what um, Linda experienced at the shop was one of our tasting classes, and um, yeah, so where you get to taste the single origins of the blend and the blend, and then um, you kind of you you taste to kind of experience what each blend brings. Mm -hmm. And I believe Linda liked the Brazil the most, the Brazil yeah. bean. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so yeah, you learn a little bit about what you're, what you're like, what you like and what your interests are. So you can maybe pick out um, a, a better select a, a, a bean um, at the shop or at the grocery store. Mm. And um, yeah, just a little coffee education course. That's cool. nice. Out there. Yeah. Uh, but it's yeah. really fun and informative, mm -hmm. and it's a great date night. Great for yes. um, ladies who are meeting. Oh, I nice. think it would even make a, a fun um, precursor to a shower of any sort, mm -hmm. just to get people moving along and so forth. And get them uh, all caffeinated. Yeah, get them all caffeinated, and then maybe have birthday birthday cake or um, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, whatever kind of cake goes with the event, and get more coffee. Uh, pour, uh, I I feel a little bad every time Sharon would mention a coffee, Ellen and I would go, oh, can we try that one? I think by the time we were done, we were so buzzed it was like we're over the moon, but it was so good to taste all the things that she has. What are your top selling three uh, drinks? Um, okay. So I would say our top selling latte is the honey lavender. People really like that right mm, now. That sounds nice. Yeah. Mm. Um, and the cold brew mm. would be after lattes. And then the third, uh, might be, um, hmm, just like Americanos. People really like Americanos too. Is there a difference? Like, you know, when you wake up in the morning, your first cup of coffee is the most important thing of the day. You know, that's, <laughs> well, it is. It's, it's like, it is. Yeah. Don't, yep. I'm not, I, yeah. I, I've had to learn that caffeine will take me across the country mm -hmm. faster and better than sugar can or anything else. You know, when we're driving, I'm like, I need my coffee. I need mm -hmm. it. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's an absolute necessity. And, if I could make it in the car, I would, but, but you, there's a morning coffee and then there's the after coffee. I mean, after dinner coffee that mm. we, there's that traditional, which you don't see people do as much anymore. I don't see right. that as a normal thing, but I mean, to me, that's always been, you've had this really nice dinner and it's also, I know it's better for your digestion. I'm just saying, <laughs> but is there a different blend that you would do versus breakfast you know what I mean oh yeah uh decaf oh yeah and oh. we have a really good decaf and I think that probably people have gone away from decaf because mm. um it, it's not made very well mm -mm. generally like usually when you get a cup of decaf it's not something you enjoy drinking <laughs> and you know <laughs> I would just like to say to hotels just don't yeah. even put it out because it hotel decaf coffee it's it yeah it's, but there's it's people disgusting who, no but it people is. It, but people there are people who can't have caffeine yeah you know, and like, i know but and they should the, be able to enjoy a good cup of coffee yeah, it's ridiculous yeah, and it and, should taste like coffee at yeah. least not dishwater yeah mm, that's we, what it tastes like to me we definitely take <laughs> good care of our decaf because we mm. we know that there's people out there that you know can't handle the caffeine and mm -hmm. I understand that and um but mm. it is much more difficult to roast and I think that that's where people go wrong is they treat it, it like a regular coffee bean but it is um since it's decaffeinated generally it's boiled to get the caffeine oh. out oh. and so oh. it's very delicate and you have to roast it completely different than um huh interesting wow than, i didn't uh, know that i always wondered how did they yank the caffeine yeah. out i mean i always wondered <laughs> like, about that it's like what 
what happens in that process? Is no it fertilizer. No yeah, fertilizer no, like, for the plant. Is this like an unfertilized plant? Like, what? Is it? <laughs> Like, well, I don't know. Oh. You know, I just always wondered, like, what the heck is decaf coffee? But there are people who really can't have, mm -hmm. you know, I can't have too much caffeine and nobody no. wants me to. Like I do. Though. They don't. They don't. No. They don't. No, um, if I have more caffeine, I need to have more wine to calm me down. It's yes. the balance again. But it's, it's but true. I don't think coffee should be that you do get the jitters and the crazies. When no. you have a good cup of coffee, I think there's some, there's a balance, but espresso and everything I know there's the ones that you know really jack you up but there's a I don't know I just really appreciated a really good cup of coffee so mm. thank you for that yeah, Diva good. Linda you find the best you really yeah. do aren't I lucky I guess yeah. uh, this is uh, uh, Sharon and I both belong to a ladies uh, charity uh, uh, group in Phoenix um, and uh, it was so it was so nice of her to I said to everybody, would you, if you'd like to uh, have me come and visit you and perhaps be on, on my radio show, would you, uh, which is now an internet show. Yes. So she was one of the ones that said, come on down. Um, yeah. So uh, that's how we connected. And I'm really glad because I just uh, love local coffee shops. I do not have one in the area that I live in. They have to move. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, it's really, it's a sad thing because I'm such a loyal customer with a big credit card. So it's just, you know. <laughs> She's a diva. Yeah. Yeah, She's tempting you. Shit. <laughs> well, and you know, her clientele would appreciate my sparkly side. So, oh, um, yes. Yeah. So, I think uh, I just loved everybody that came in and came out. And there were dogs on the patio. And, oh, oh cool. I don't know. Yeah. It was just, um, it was just lovely. It was a lovely experience. And obviously, other people in the neighborhood think it's, it's just fabulous. And, and for her to mm -hmm. have weathered the bigger uh, brands coming in is a statement. Oh, just and on COVID. itself. And, Mm -hmm. the whole COVID COVID, thing. oh and she can tell you about oh how, I, I don't want to talk about COVID anymore but yeah. her story of how she's arrived during COVID was very uh you know just an entrepreneur what did you do yeah well of course we were okay <laughs> well um yeah a April came around and I think we were the only business in the entire building that was open and oh, wow. um so we looked closed. Um, we are kind of hidden back behind some vines. And um, mm. so we stuck one of our employees out in a tent on the corner with um, <laughs> gallons of cold brew, five you pound bags this. of coffee, <laughs> whatever we could sell out there, we put out there. And um, they just informed people that we were still open. And we were able to social distance that way. So we didn't cut any staff. We had one person outside, mm. one person inside. And uh, we were slow enough to maintain that and um, busy enough to stay open. Stay open. Mm. Good Isn't that just, That's I mean, smart. All, you just put mm -hmm. all these pieces mm -hmm. together, all these puzzle pieces of how one runs a business. And you see how success happens. You know, this is what success looks like. Mm -hmm. This is how, how you get to success. I mean, these are things that intrigue me. And, uh, you know, Phoenix is a, Phoenix area is a new uh, area for me. I'm more of a Southern California person uh, or a Washington State person. But now I'm a Phoenix person. So there you are. So I'm trying mm -hmm. to learn. And this is definitely, I would say, if you're, if you're in the Phoenix area, and you're going to visit or uh, are going to be around there or going to go to the hospital over there or be on the trail that's over there. You need to stop here. There's something for everybody. And it's good, you know, and it's a little bit different. I love it. And are you are you uh, selling the coffee bags of coffee beans online? Yes, we do have an online shop. And cool. um, you can you can do the decaf, too. I'm I'm not sure if it's on there or if you just put in the comments decaf, but we can we can send both of them to you. So I'll give everyone the website. It's S O Coffee Shop E S S O. So S O Coffee Shop.com. Did I get that one right? Yep, it is. And then also again, keep up with the diva. 
follow her sparkly heels as she goes across the country you need around coffee. the world. You need yeah, go and get her. You do. All in good taste.info. Again, the article is up on blend radio and tv.com. It'll also be featured in the next issue of Eat Drink Be Merry magazine. And uh, we want to thank everyone for joining us. Thank you for listening. Thank you both. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. And have fun and cheers and yep. here's to coffee. Yes, thank it you. tastes as good as it smells. Oh. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>